If you have a Bible, would you turn to the book of Genesis? The book of Genesis, chapter 38, 38 and 29. If you have it, would you say amen? Amen. amen. But when he drew back his hand, his brother came out. And she said, so this is how you have broken out. And he was named Perez. Father, we thank you for this night. We give you glory for this night. We give you honor for this night. We give you praise for this night. We magnify you for this night. God, I ask that in this night we would understand greater who you are. I ask that in this night we would understand greater of who we are. God, I ask that you would move by your spirit. I ask that you would touch and heal and deliver and set free. I ask that when we leave this place, we would leave different and changed than the way that we walked in. May it not be of our own accord, but may it be solely by the presence and the power and the person of the Holy Ghost. I ask for a change on the inside of us all by the person of your spirit for your glory and for our good. And we give you thanks and we give you praise in advance for what's coming. And we worship you. May it be you who speaks through me and not me by myself. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And I thank you, Lord. And I love you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Would you do me a favor? Would you look at your neighbor and would you tell them the word breakthrough and then you may be seated. Let's look at our text one more time. Genesis chapter 38 and verse 29. But when he drew back his hand, his brother came out and she said, this is how you have broken out. And he was named Perez. Genesis 38 is probably one of the most complicated and detailed chapters in your Bible. This one chapter alone has enough information in it to cover one's own lifespan. We deal with a myriad of characters. We deal with a plethora of plots and themes. We deal with the history that culminates to where we find ourselves in verse 29. And as quickly as I can, I'm going to attempt to try uh, to break down and help somebody understand what was going on here before we get to where we're supposed to go. One of the main characters in Genesis 38 is a man named Judah. Everyone say Judah. Amen. Judah, whose name means praise, is one of the 12 sons of Jacob. Everyone knows the phrase, the 12 tribes of Israel, correct? There's the tribe of Levi, there's the tribe of Issachar, there's the tribe of Naphtali, there's the tribe of Levi, and many others. And we have a man named Judah who has his own, going to be the heir of his own clan or tribe named Judah. Judah ends up marrying a woman and he ends up having three sons. Judah marries off his first son to a lady named Tamar. Are we good so far? Okay. The first son who was married to Tamar evidently had an issue with Tamar. And he refused to have children with her. And the Bible says that because of his own issues and because of some things that he was doing, I don't have time to get into it, but because of some, time, some things that he was doing, God took him out. 
in Hebrew history and in Hebrew tradition, the next son in line was then supposed to marry the wife of his now deceased brother. This second son of Judah really had an issue because he really was not trying to have children with Tamar. I would assume that he kind of had a possible ego problem. He said, while I'm married to this lady, while she's my wife, technically, traditionally, she's not my wife. She's still the wife of my deceased brother. And the children that come from our union will not be mine, they'll be his. And so he began to engage in some activity that the Lord um, showed some disfavor on, and then he died. Judah has a third son. The third son is the last son. And this son is supposed to marry now this lady named Tamar. But Judah says, I'm afraid that if my son marries her, he's going to die too. So he tells Tamar, just wait until the boy gets a little bit older, and then I'll marry him off to you, and everything will be okay. So in the meantime, Tamar, why don't you go to your father's house, and you just go chill out over there, and wait till this little boy gets old enough to marry you. Well, the Bible says that some time did go by, and Tamar ended up finding out that the son, that last son of Judah, ended up becoming a man, but she wasn't married off to him yet. And while all of this is going on, and while all this is transpiring, we find in Genesis 38 that it is now time for the sheep to be sheared. And all of the men go up to the place where they're going to shear their sheep. And Tamar, the Bible says, puts a veil on, takes off her widow's garments, and stands off by the side of the road and, and, and acts like she is a shrine prostitute. And she lies there and sits there in wait for Judah. Now, I'm not going to take too much time with that, but obviously Tamar knew that Judah had some proclivities. Because if she said, I can dress up like a prostitute and get him, there's some things that she already knew about him. But that's a whole other sermon for a whole other night. Laugh a little bit. And what happens is that what Tamar understood about Judah and his proclivities and whatever it is that his issue was and engaging with prostitutes, it ended up working. And so she disguises herself and the two lay together and in the middle of the night, she takes off. And so some time goes by and Tamar now realizes that she's pregnant. And the associates of Judah and the men of Judah go to Judah and say, you know, your, your daughter-in-law, Tamar, she's pregnant by another man. And Judah, in all of his zeal, says, well, we're going to bring her out to burn her. And Tamar sends a message to Judah and says, the man of whose seal, cord, and staff I have in my hand, that's the man that impregnated me. And Judah realizes that it was him. And he says, she is more righteous than I. We come some six months later to the point where Tamar is now laid down on the ground about to give birth to a baby. We come to the climax of the story where a baby is going to be birthed that, the re that was the result of a union between once was a father-in-law and a daughter-in-law. And as Tamar is pushing out this baby, while Tamar is engaging in uh, baby delivery, 
the maid servant looks down and says, there's something going on that's a little bit different than what is normal. There's something that's going on that's just a little bit different than what should be. Tamar, the lady said, I have to tell you something. You not only have one baby in there, but you have two babies in there. And as Tamar finds herself in those long, never-ending hours of labor, and as she's screaming and pushing out and trying to get these two babies out, the Bible says that one arm came out first. And the maid servant, who understands that there are twins in there, grabs a red ribbon and begins to tie around the wrist of that first arm that was thrusted out. Now, if the story is not interesting enough, it gets a whole lot more interesting. Because what happened was, was that little baby who had stuck out his arm, all of a sudden took the arm back in. And the maid servant says, this is not normal. Once you're coming out, you're coming out. And there begins a jostle in the womb of Tamar. There begins a conflict inside of the womb of Tamar. All of a sudden, that one baby who had his arms stuck out and who had that red ribbon tied around it is now not the baby that is coming forth. There's another baby behind the first one. Uh, that first baby went back into the crevices of the darkness and of the deep of Tamar's womb and all of a sudden out comes another person. Uh, all of a sudden comes out another head. Uh, all of a sudden out comes another arm and, and it's a completely different baby than the first one that she saw. And the midwife grabs that second baby and says, so this is how you have broken out. I'm going to name you Perez. Perez in the Hebrew takes up two English words. The first English word is the word breakthrough. A breakthrough is something that culminates and carries you over from the place of where you are to the place of where you're going. A breakthrough is something that enables you to push through and move forward into and past the thing that has been of conflict to you. A breakthrough is something that catapults you from the space of where you find yourself into the space that you're supposed to be. And she says the first aspect of who you are, baby, is you are a breakthrough. You found something to break through. You, you had a strategy. You, you had an idea. You, you had an impulse to break through the place from where you are into the place where you're supposed to be. The second word that deals with the name Perez is the name breach. What is a breach? A breach is a small hole in a space. A, a breach is a small crevice in a wall. And the maid servant says, you little one, you little breakthrough, you found how to get out. And this little baby named Perez comes out first and his brother comes out second. His name is Zarah. Zarah means uh, brightness or scarlet. What is happening here is that there initially is a conflict. There is a war going on within the womb of Tamar. There is something that is of absolute significance that nobody else can see. There is something going on that is pushing and prodding one to come out, but the other one to understand that he must come out first. There is something going on of conflict and, and unresolution that is prodding and pushing that second baby to come out and do something that he's never done before. 
There's something going on in the womb of Tamar that is, that is of absolute warfare and that is absolute conflict. And that first baby that came out finds himself having to obey and, 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 and be controlled by the will of something else that has a greater will than his. Perez finds himself inside of that womb hiding behind what was supposed to be his older brother and he says you don't understand man there's something about me that you don't get there's something about who I am that you don't understand there's something about my destiny that you have no idea about and I love you and I care about you but I just got to take you by the nap of the neck and just pull you back just a little bit and I just gotta reach around you because I gotta get out of the place from where I am right now so I gotta tell you something it's probably gonna be the first one that you ever hear and it's gonna be this one just excuse me because I gotta get up out of here just excuse me because I gotta break through and break out because I got something to do and I got somewhere to go And Perez finds himself being ushered into the world and the earth realm There's a war going on. There's a jostling going on. Inside of the womb of Tamar was WWF. For you younger kids, WWE. Smackdown. MMA. Cage fighting. And what happens in war is that somebody is going to win. What happens in war is that somebody is going to be a conqueror and somebody is going to be a loser. In war, somebody is going to engage in warfare and in conflict and, and in chaos and, and in melee. And somebody of the two parties has an agenda that is greater and that is stronger than the other one. Somebody understands that what they're engaging in is of, of absolute necessity and destiny. They understand that should they put their sword back in and should they put their gun back in their holster, that losing is of absolute reality. When you engage in warfare, when you engage in a conflict, you have to go into the fight understanding that you're going to win. You have to go into the fight understanding that you have something on the inside of you that is just a little bit above the person that you're having conflict with. You have to understand that there's something on the inside of you that's going to push you and propel you into victory. You got to understand that when you engage and step on the line of war, and conflict that you have no agenda or idea to put your arms down in and to sit down in a coward position and just give the enemy way in your life. When you understand who you are and when you understand what's on the inside of you, there is absolutely nothing that can stop you. There's nothing that can block you. There's nothing that can deter you or deny you or waylay you. The minute you step into warfare, the minute you step into conflict, understand that you have living on the inside of you the power and the strength of the almighty you have on the inside of you the glory and the power and the splendor of God himself by the third person of the trinity living on the inside of you and when you choose to engage in warfare and in conflict God will see you through he has no agenda to watch you lose he has no idea that you're ever going to give up he said, that's my son. That's my daughter. I live in them and they're going to win. Can I tell you something tonight? Your victory is already assured. Your win is already guaranteed. 
everything that will take place and transpire in your future is already guaranteed for victory we stand in a place of engaging in warfare and in conflict some way some reason asking God are you sure I'm going to win are you sure you're gonna see me through this enemy looks very very large this enemy looks very very imposing he has more uh, armor than I do he has more artillery than I do he has more history of warfare and of fighting than I do. But I need to tell you tonight that the God who lives on the inside of you says it doesn't matter what they have. For it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. I am the God of eternity. I don't care how long they've been fighting. I was before them. I don't care how long they were speaking. I've been speaking before them and I'll speak through you when I want to, how I want to. So open your mouth. Take up your arms, lock and load, and get ready to fight, and get ready to win, because I have no intention of ever seeing you lose. You got to get to the point where you understand that you are a Perez. You got to understand that you got to get to the point that you are a breaker, that you are someone who can look in the face of your adversary and of your conflict and of the thing that's telling you that you cannot win. And you got to say, you know what, baby, one of these days you coming down. One of these days you about to get sat down and you ain't never getting back up again. I am a son of Perez and I am a breaker and I will find the breach on the inside of you <laughs> understand that what we read in Genesis 38 is not that of carnal human origin what we read in Genesis 38 is not the mere hand of man orchestrating and working out the details of two babies' destinies. What we read in Genesis 38 is in fact, my brother and in fact, my sister, the divinely orchestrated move by the hand of God with these two babies. For understand that within that womb of Tamar, God said there's a little baby in there and I've got to use him. There's a little baby in there and I put destiny on his life. There's a little baby in there and I've got to bring him out first. For he will not just be named Perez for what he did, but he will be Perez based on what he does. There's something of absolute significance and destiny about his life. He's not just going to be a son of Judah. He's not just going to be a son of praise. I don't care if praise and, and Tamar get together. I understand that Tamar's name meant a, a, a date palm. Not a date like you're going to go out with somebody. Like a date like the fruit. It came from a palm tree. And remember my brother and my sister, what they worship Jesus with. It don't matter if worship and praise come together. Whatever's going to happen shall happen. When God puts two things together, he has his destiny for that thing and he says that little baby in there will not only be named Perez but he shall be the ancestor of King David he shall be the ancestor of Solomon he shall be the leader of the tribe of praise I put something on the inside of him that's just got to got to got to come out I put something on the inside of him that's got to be released a, a praiser shall come forth an ancestor shall come forth and through his loins and through his lineage shall come my son in whom I will be well pleased I gotta bring him out first for my son is first I don't care tonight what your conflict is I don't care tonight what your issue is I don't care tonight what the barrier in your life is. I don't care if it's fear. I don't care if it's worry. I don't care if it's chaos. I don't care if it's the deepest and darkest experience and fear that has ever plagued your mind. 
I have news for you that the darker it is and the darker it gets, the greater God's light is going to shine in that thing. The darker it gets and the stronger it gets, the stronger God is going to be in that situation. I got one more thing to say and I'm done. The word breach there, as I said, means that there's a hole in the wall. Can I tell you? That your adversary, who longs to destroy you and who longs to take you out, unbeknownst to him, has left a hole in the wall. It's just small enough to see through. It's just small enough to get a vision through. It's just small enough or large enough to see something of your future. Your adversary does not have the hold on your future. He does not have the ability to shadow and blind out and block out your future. For he has no control over your future. The only one, the only person, the only being, the only God that has control over your future is God Almighty. The only God that has control over your future is El Shaddai. The only God who has control over your future is El Elyon, Yahweh, Elohim, Jehovah Rapha, Sitkenu, Rapha, the Lord, your righteousness, the one who calls you by name and he says I don't care what the enemy has set up against you I will make sure that there's a hole enough so that you can see your destiny so that you won't give up so that you won't quit and that hole is not just meant for your vision but it's meant for your breakthrough there's a hole in the wall that you're going to get ready to work down there's a hole in the wall that you're going to get ready to push through there's going to be a release in that wall that is going to be the key to your victory and it's some point very very soon you're gonna shout and dance and praise and spin and wave and trust me and that hole is gonna break out and that wall is gonna come tumbling down and you're gonna move into everything I said you would everyone's standing your feet in this place It's easy to think that God is far removed from the day-to-day occurrences of our life. But God, he holds all of the detail and he does amazing things in spite of our messy entanglements that seem to threaten his purpose no matter the barrier. I have news for you. You can have a breakthrough. I'm going to read this and now we're going to pray. Your destiny, everybody say, my destiny will push me to a breakthrough. My brother and my sister, you are destined to break through the hole in the wall. Whatever barriers are in front of you, it's a hole big enough to break through. Wherever you are in life right now, whatever you might be dealing with right now, I'm here to tell you tonight that there's a hole in that wall that's big enough to break through. God left it big enough that you can move through that thing and have victory. Your victory is assured. Your victory is guaranteed. And everything that you need right now, in this moment, is already yours. Everybody raise your hands in this place. Father, we thank you right now. We give you glory right now. We 
give you honor right now. We magnify your holy and your glorious name. We give you the praise for who you are and for what you do. Understanding that you do all things well. So in this room right now, I speak breakthrough. I speak the barrier to come down now. I speak the stepping over into your plan and destiny now. May the power of the Almighty raise upon the inside of you so that you might begin to move into everything that God has called you to move into. Step out and step into everything God has called you to. And he, God, shall have his way. You are a son of the breaker. You are that descendant of Perez. You've got Perez DNA living on the inside of you because the Almighty lives on the inside of you. Never look at your wall and say, you're going to stop me. Look at your wall and say, I'm going to break you down. So God, I thank you for what you're going to do. I thank you for the breakthrough that's coming. I thank you that the, for the victories that are going to be won. And when it's all over, and when it's all said and done, may each one of your children turn around and give you praise. May they give you glory and may they give you honor for what you have done. In your mighty and precious name, Jesus, we thank you and we give. Now, Father, rest upon your people. May your hand be over their lives. May your hand be over their minds. Bring them peace when they need it. And bring them victory, I ask. Keep us under your care and under your watch. And may we live every day to give you praise. In your name, Jesus, we thank you. We love you and we give you praise. And every saint in this place said amen and amen put your hands together and give god one more praise in this house